Yo guys, welcome back to the Beyond Football Podcast. And today we got a special episode. Today's guest is not actually a footballer, but he grew up with, you know, the dream of, you know, becoming one day, one day becoming a professional footballer. But, you know, that didn't work out for so some reasons, you know, that's how life works. But now he's, he's the perfect example of, you know, making something out of yourself. You know, if football doesn't work out, He's just showing that, you know, there's more to life than football and there's, you can, there's more that you can give to the world than football. He's currently at a and at a big record label. He's worked with big artists whose songs you've definitely listened to on repeat. So this guy is, is real serious, man. So Mali Mecca, welcome to the Beyond Football podcast. Thank you, Daniel. You actually gave me, you gassed me still. I can't lie, I have to pay you some money for that intro. So. <laughs> <laughs> that intro, man. That intro was nah, blessed, right? Needed, man. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Nah, just hoping, you know, people can Sorry. see that, you know, that, you know, you can make something out of yourself in other industries other than football. So, yeah, let's get straight in. Like, was it always a dream, football, for you? No, it was like even you can probably vouch for it. Like at one point, it was like you, you either eat, breathe, or sleep football. There's nothing else that was going on in my life. Like I would wake up, go to school, go training, go home. That was like the rotation. That was my clockwork all the time, every other day. Like it was football, or nothing. And yeah. I feel like it got to a point where football was taken over to my life to a certain point where like other things around me were been affected to my relationships with my family relationships with um external people relationships with with school education yeah. anything that was anything that I didn't feel like was benefiting me was taking a toll because of football and I feel like from a young age like a lot of young people's dream is to, to make it, to yeah. be what, what you see on tv is what everyone wants to be but you don't really see the hard work the the, hard work behind it. it yeah literally yeah, it was, it was beautiful it was it was it was at one point so when did you when did you start playing um young i remember i used to live in um woolwich and all my brethren used to play football but like i was the only one that wasn't i was playing in the playground and that but like my dad never enrolled me in a team and that so it's just a bit of like what's going on like yeah. i need to find some sort of structure but i just never got enrolled in a team and i moved over to where we live now my like my friend Connor, like his dad used to run a team. I was like, yeah, let's um, let me join this club that we played for. Played there at primary, then like year six happened. You played district. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's district where I met. Yeah. That's actually where I met you. Yeah, no, it's it's my, life is crazy. Still. It's crazy. We met him. We life met in football district trials. Yeah. Hundred. This district okay. happened. Then I, um. Then it, like that's when it gets a bit more serious. Like you stop playing for fun and it starts becoming like raw. Like this yeah. could actually go to something. So I started going around, left like the area I was living in, joined like a like a non-league semi-pro team, like like um team called Bromley SC. Yeah. Played there like, a year and a half, left. Is that um, Kent, Kent League? Were they in the Kent League? Um at the time we were young for that. It was something called the Tandridge League. Okay. Like in year seven. The Kent League, Bromley weren't enrolled in that, but I played in something called the Tandridge League in year eight. They go to Kent League at the time, innit? Yeah, um, yeah. Played there. Then I moved to Dartford, stayed at Dartford for a minute. And then, um, like, year 10, year 10 is when, like, I started doing some, like, work. So I played for, like, um, agency teams. So I used to literally just, like, get sent around the country playing for different clubs, trying to go on yeah, trial yeah. here. And spend a lot of times in the cycle, a lot of boys, I feel like, are in that cycle at the moment. They don't know how it feels. Yeah, like yeah, it. yeah. But well, hold up, that that. if we hold up a second, like, how was it like, obviously, playing at Dartford Academy, you know, being that academy ball, playing for district, you know, back then district was like, especially where we live, like, if you play for district, that means you're like, serious. Yeah. You're like, you're the guy. Um, like, so like, how was that experience? At, at the time, at the time, you feel bigger than what you are, but I'd be so real, like, looking back at it now, Nothing. Who, Nothing. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't mean anything. Like genuinely speaking, unless you're, um, like the way we treated it was as if we're full time footballers. But when you, when you, unless you're like playing for a Cat Two or Cat One Academy, that's when you have. I feel like that's when like you can take football as serious as we did. But like yeah. we took it as a 
jobs at that young age, I just feel like it was so detrimental to our like our growth as individuals. It was just a bit like literally, like, but yes. that's that's how it is though. Like as for a footballer, you know, as you said, we're all chasing the dream to obviously we were all chasing the dream to become a professional one day, and literally that's what it takes. We have to literally sacrifice everything if we even 100%. want to get a sniff. And even doing uh, that it doesn't it doesn't uh, even mean that you'll make it like. I would say I would even stick echo what you're saying. Like my people, my friends can vouch for me. Like sacrifice in everything I I do in life, whether it's music, football, education, I've always sacrificed a lot. So like when I played football, I did like see it as the be all end all, and I sacrificed a lot of things. Like, I didn't go, I didn't go parties, I didn't drink alcohol, mm. didn't smoke, didn't do anything. I very straightforward. My 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 lifestyle was very linear. Like I'll do yeah, everything. Yeah that's possible to give me the edge around other people. So it is true. Like you do, like if you, if you really want to go to the top, you like for someone like me who didn't even get anywhere. Yeah. I was, still, I was still making those sacrifices. If you want to get to the top, you have to be doing more than that, in my opinion. And exactly. if you feel like you can play about and it's not, it's, it's not going to happen. Literally. And that's it. And it's, it's mad because, you know, I just remember those district days, there was times where, you know, the guys we were playing with, some of them were a bit big time and that, but then it's yeah. like, when you look back on it, like, where, where are they now? Are they playing professional like, football and now? Like, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> I have to stay home. And, it's, mad. it's mad. But uh, I feel like in every bad situation, there's always positives to take out of it. And I feel like playing sports in general, um, but sports, is, like, holistically, sports, like, develop your character and it's very mm-hmm. character building. So the things I learned within football, how to be a leader, how to work well in a, within, a, within a team structure, play the game properly. Like there's certain things that being involved within football at a certain level gives you and teaches you. So you now take the things that you learn from that position into your life. So now if you're in a workspace with people and you're working within a team, how do you work within a team for everyone else to, how do you win collectively as a team? Yeah, yeah, and 100%. That, you, that you, you kind of were taught in football and apply that to your real life. Yeah, that's facts what you're saying that, like. So when did you end up like you know going on trials to try and like make it to the next level, like get uh, past the stage of Dartford Academy and that? I we were jigging at one point. Like we, there was a group of us, yeah, and it's mad, yeah. When I get older, I feel like I want to write a, like a series of books or documentaries. But I'll call us the LinkedIn boys. But we were jigging that like, me and a few others. We had we all had LinkedIn at the ages of 14, 15, but not to get jobs, to get trials at different clubs, innit? Yeah. So we all had we had the list of head of recruitments on our phones and we'll be in school, like messaging all the head of recruitments at school, asking for trials and stuff. And it got to a point where like I linked up with some guy that ran an agency team and um it was in Brixton, but I was located in Kent at the time, innit? So I traveled from Kent to Brixton to go play against other academies in, in London, uh, not only London in the UK. So I remember we went to First game was in like Norwich, played Norwich game. Mm. And God, the first half, the, my first half I played in that game was terrible. Yeah. I was gonna get taken off, but I was gonna get taken off, but then one of the youths um back chatted the manager and then they kept me on second half. I killed it. Mm. Got asked back, asked, I got asked to stay back there. Went to the Rotherham. That was an interesting experience for me. Um went Colchester, got asked back there. Um Spent a bit of time there, but again, you know how the game goes. Yeah, you spend yeah. a bit of time there. They tell you, oh, right now is not the right time. I'm not looking for yeah, someone. Yeah, just like, that. like keep being member. Um, so that's like year ten, year year eleven is where like you can get your scholarships. Um, so now it's like it's it's go time. It's now be yeah, like, full yeah, time. You know I mean? Yeah, exactly. So that's when I was going around. Um, pardon me, chasing um a scholar, and that's probably the most. Um, challenging times of my life because I, I I was literally like it's now make or break so if yeah, I don't, yeah, my yeah. mindset was if I don't get the score I'm mm-hmm. finished literally so so that's what we need to obviously tap into like so at this point you said like football was your, like growing up to this point of up to year 11 that like, you know football was your dream was that like the only thing you were focused on becoming like or did you have anything else that you had in mind at the time I'll be so real I'm not even going to fool everyone at the time, it was football or nothing. Like, that was the only thing on my head. But really and truly, I had other interests. But it takes something to happen in your life. I feel like it takes a trigger point to occur in your life for you to understand that the interest that you have the outside of football can actually be career paths. Yeah. Obviously, where we're from and where we come from, 
those experiences and those um, things aren't really taught to us. So we just feel like, cool, either football, music, like making music as in like being an artist, yeah. a rapper, was per se, or you go and do a nine to five and go uni. There's no in between, there's no middle ground. And I feel like yeah. um, in our community, there's a lot of unlearning to do and there's a lot of learning to do. As in, and understand. We'll, we'll get. I feel like we get there. We'll get there eventually. But understanding that there are roles which you can do that align with your interests, but can also facilitate you as an individual as well. So you yeah, don't have 100%. to to work for you to work within football. And if your interests lay within football and lie within football, you don't have to be a footballer. For you to work within, for you to work within music, and if your interests are musical, you don't have to be an art rapper or a singer. You don't have to be one of those. There are several roles. Um, underneath them that you can do but because we're not aware that those roles exist exactly you just don't feel like like, it's an opportunity for us yeah and I feel like you know that's a lot of like young people need to be educated in that and you know our parents as you said our community we need to be educated about you know some people nowadays our age group like outside of football like some of them you know just pursue uni just because they're they want to um, please their parents and stuff like that like not actually knowing like what's out there what they can do with the with their life and like what industry they can go into so yeah it's it's true man that like, but it's it's important to get that balance between you know your interests and football as well so 100 i feel like yeah at the time i'm going back to a question like i had interest but i didn't know what i wanted to do other than football in my head i was like cool if football doesn't work i'm gonna end up being a lawyer yeah. Because my dad was, my dad kept on drumming into me that I'm good at English, got very good grades at English at school. So it was like, cool, if all doesn't work, law. That was only so if I, if I don't get my scholar, I'm gonna go to sixth form, do two years, bang it out, go uni, go study law. That was me. That was my that was where my head was at. So really and truly, that, to answer your question, that's what I was doing. That's what my head was at. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously, how was that experience, you know, of you know that that make or break the last dance? <laughs> Well, you know it's, funny. it's funny you say that. I remember um, that summer, I was so stressed out. Like, I was, me, I got a brother called Victor. I mean, Victor were training every day in a park prior to pre season. So, we were doing pre pre season yeah. so we can get ready for our trials at the clubs we had designated. Man, you know, we're really jigging, man. <laughs> it was very funny. Um, I remember <laughs> I had a few places that were promised to us that we were meant to go to, one of them fell through. So then the last place we were meant to go to, I feel like was, was Peterborough at the end of the year, end of the uh, pre-season. And went down there. I went down there, um, spent a bit of time there, played, 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 et cetera, et cetera. And then I remember I got told, um, like, they were, they were looking for a left-back at the time, innit? Yeah. And that's what I was playing at the time. There was, like, me and two other left-backs from other clubs. One of them was from Fulham. The other was from QPR. And I'm the only, that's like, not from... A professional academy environment so it's like bro this is a bit like it was a bit yeah, daunting yeah. to stay in it spent a bit of time there the other two didn't stay as long as i did but then it got to the end of my trial and i remember i was still trialing there when um people got their results at school okay so, so what I, I, in year 11 yeah like year 11 i i had no school to go to okay because I thought you're gonna get this spot. I'm gonna get this spot. Yo, guys, so support for the Beyond Football podcast is now brought to you by Manscaped, who are the best in men's under the waist grooming. Manscaped produce precision engineered tools for your family jewels. So they've literally just sent me the latest trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. And I'm telling you guys, ever since I started using this, it's been a real game changer compared to the shaving stick I normally use. Like, Especially as a professional footballer, we always have to wear slips and just different training gear, like shorts and everything during training and gym sessions. And ever since I started using this lawnmower 4.0, it's just been much more comfortable on a day-to-day basis during training and gym sessions. So if you guys want to join over 4 million people worldwide who trust Manscaped, then use the code BEYONDFOOTBALL at manscaped.com to get free worldwide shipping and 20% off your next order. The link will be in the description below. Make sure you use that code. Get this Yo, how did how did obviously you know chasing the dream of football, you know, that last dance in year eleven, how did that affect you know your GCSEs and the period of you know balancing football and education? I'll be so real. I am the worst case study for that because really and truly it's only God that brought me through my GCSEs. Like I did very well uh, regarding 
what I had going on in my life and what I was trying to pursue. Like I didn't really take school as seriously as I should have, but because I'm not, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not going even to play my own home, but I'm like a sharp individual in it. So I'm yeah, not, yeah. I'm dumb. so I was able to make sure that things were still ticking in the background. So when I got my results, I was like, yeah, this is cool. I'm calm, done very well, but my head was still out. Cool, let me get this call up. Once it didn't happen, I got told, yeah, can't lie. You don't have the budget, all this. Like, you know the politics that they give you? Yeah, you know? yeah. That they always like, I was like, you know what? Cool. Um, I, I went to sixth form. I didn't even go to a football. Ever, everyone else was going to like football academy, like one of the, the colleges that you go to. I was like, I don't even want to do this for myself. Let me just go come myself, go sixth form, chill for a bit. Yeah. I was playing for an agency for a bit. And then it got to that point where like everyone was working and making money. I'm like, yo, do I love this? Do I love this to the point where I want to do this and struggle? Yeah. Do it. Oh, and I was like, you know what? Um, let me just. Well, let's it a bit. Actually, you get. Let, let's get actually. Like, how were you actually feeling? You know, during that mentally. Time? Mentally, bro. Like you know, because I was lost. It's not. I was lost. About, it's not. I was lost. About, I need to get into it. Then I feel like again, a lot of people can relate to me, but like I was lost in it. Like I had interests, but I, as an individual, I was completely lost. Like. I lived my whole life. My identity was football. My, everyone would like associate me as a footballer, like with yeah, Mali, yeah. Mali that plays football. He's hard, like my man's, my man's cool, you know. That yeah, was the yeah, yeah. thing I had at the time. And once that's stripped away from you, you're like, who are you as an individual? And that's what you have to ask yourself. Who you know, what are you doing? You that's literally people. it. Yeah. And it's scary because like a lot of people don't know who they are. A lot of people don't know who they are. That's why we have to keep raising awareness. For the 100%. importance, but it's about cool. It's about looking into yourself. What I realized is that cool. I am much bigger than this sport. This sport doesn't define me. What can I do with myself that um, allows me to still thrive and succeed within a space that I'm interested in, and still yeah. get the same fulfillment mm. that football would give, if more. Okay. And <laughs> I would say that there was a few roles I I, I looked into. I remember. Agency was one, like the person that was acting as my agent at the time, um, like he was very young and he was working within um, the, music, uh, the football agency role. So I was seeing firsthand how it is for a young individual working within that space. And I was like, yo, if this football doesn't work for me, and he was a good person because he always told me like, bro, if this football doesn't work, like I got you kind of thing in it. So like yeah. I looked and I was looking at him as a blueprint and he's doing well for himself at the moment. Um, and I was looking at him as a blueprint. I was like, yo, this is sick. Like, this is a young black individual that I can, that I can align myself with and represents me that's doing well in a field that I'm interested in. And he's making money as well. Mm. Um, I was also at school, like, pl- plotting, like, cool. How can I, like, what are my interests? I look deep within myself, football, music, music. Cool. What can you do with the music? At the time, I was listening to a lot of podcasts. I was like, cool. And as you know, um, I just I said to myself, I'm going to start a podcast. Like, yeah. I'm just going to start a podcast. For the sake of starting right, podcasts, podcasts when, it, when podcasts weren't, weren't even a thing. Podcasts weren't popping, man. That's the thing about Mali. Mali Mali's ahead of the game, man. Mali's ahead of the game. I tried, bro. I podcasts bro. like, what? It's I been like three years ago? Yeah, it was, it was three. I'm not, yeah, so, yeah, I was 16 when I was 16. I was 16, yeah. Three, oh. three years, yeah. Oh, yes. Just getting into that, that. But I know back then, people were like, podcasts? What's a podcast? Stuff like okay. that. But obviously... Back then, uh, you know, people didn't know what you were doing, but you obviously had that plan, you had that vision. So yeah, like, yeah. how did you, like, how did that come about? And how did you, obviously, the process of doing that and everything? Uh, bro, it's funny. I'll tell you, I'll go, I wouldn't try and go and waste people's time and go along with it. But basically, long story short, I started a podcast. I had an idea of doing a podcast. I was, just, I was like, right, like, all these podcasts I'm listening to, everyone on here is like 25 plus, like, I'm a 16 year old. And I can't relate to any of them, but I'm still listening to it because at the time I felt like I was on my ears. So I was like, cool, how am I meant to bridge the gap between my demographic and their demographic? I was like, cool, let me start a podcast because no one my age is doing this. Let me try and do one. Mm. I had the idea. I was telling everyone, else, I was telling everyone at school, like, I'm going to do a podcast. Like, I'm doing this, I'm doing I'm that. I'm just laughing at that. <laughs> yeah, I'm mad, like, podcast, you're a skunk. Like, you're not yeah. doing a podcast. And took, took time. I remember I shouted at my friend um, and... We were meant to go to Camden one day um, to Camden Roundhouse to do some like work at a podcast. He cancelled on me last minute, like, literally like an hour before we were meant to go. I said, you know what, let me just go out there and see what I can do. Um, I went there, funny enough, like I was so inexperienced at the time. I didn't even know, I didn't, I didn't book a podcast space. I just booked a room. 
that was empty with a laptop, with a, with a Mac computer. So I was like, you know what? I'm here. Luckily, my friend didn't pull up. We would have had nothing to do. Yeah. Let me just sit on. Let me sit on the computer and start designing like logos and stuff for the podcast. Very nice. So, I have access to a, a, a Mac in it. I've like, did that, done that. Now came back home, like, and to visually see my podcast in physical form. I was like, I can now. This is tangible now. Like, I can do yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, cool. How do I work from here? Um, and then there's a podcast called Half Cast Podcast. I used to watch a lot by Chucky, and um, I just contacted the. I looked into where he does the podcast. I contacted them. It was in West London at the time. Um, live at Grove. I contacted the the studio and I was like, look, can I put this? At the time, I was working at JD, not getting a lot of money, yeah. but like, I would literally split half my monthly wage on booking podcast studios, so I can just build a platform. My first one, I got my friend who done obviously Noah's videos. Yeah, and then we went down there, invited the man them down, and we just spoke about music for an hour and a half. Yeah. Chops up the videos, got baby chops them up for me, and I put it out, and it's like it was a breath of fresh air. Like everyone was like, yo, this is different. This yeah. is new. Like. Yeah people's perspective on relevant cultural things that make sense and then from then on it was like cool how do i scope this this is cool now i'm making a music podcast but my i don't want to be i didn't want to be a podcast at the time i just done it so i can try and get my feet within the industry and then from then on i just took off and then started using my podcast as a networking tool and getting other people on there etc yeah yeah so that was that was the vision you know to obviously get into music at the end of the day 100 percent but yeah, but that's so crazy. Like, if we're deep in it, at, at 16, you had these ideas and, you know, the idea of obviously, you know, trying to make it and get your foot into another industry. And, you know, you went through the experience of you said you were lost. You didn't know football was your identity and everything. So the fact that you can obviously, you picked yourself up and were able to, you know, start something new at such a young age and, you know, try and get yourself out there and try and make something out of yourself, you know, after football football doesn't work out, you know, it, it's, it's beautiful to see, you know, and it, it should give Thank people you. hope that, you know, it's possible, man. Like, even to echo what you just said, like, it got to a point where it's like, cool, I was known as football so much, like, people were seeing music stuff and just like, bro, oh, what are you doing? Like, this is mm. music, like, or, bro, are you still bang ball? Like, I was still getting those questions and it took a long time and I, anyone that's going through a transition in regards to what they represent and what they think people perceive them of or as, per se I would say it will take time it literally will happen overnight like you'll still get the questions like oh are you still playing football or why are you doing this it will happen over a period of time but once you cement yourself within that space and you're comfortable yeah. being something um you believe and you're passionate about you'll be good trust me and I feel like you know it takes you know um putting like your pride aside and bravery to obviously stick with that vision and just make it to, to obviously work to make something out of yourself no, 100%, like, it's hard, but again, that's like, it's, you, you either do it, like, all these ideas I had in my head, like, you either follow through, or 10 years from now, you'll be going, what if? Exactly. Um, in life, I don't ever want to have any regrets, so I might as well do it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, we move, we, we go again, but exactly. I'd rather not, what if? And, you know, that's, you know, that's the mentality we have to have. 100%. That's the mentality, you know, the growth mindset, you know, always trying to, push for excellence and that and that's that's great man but let's get into obviously how you actually you know got into got your foot in the door of the music in music industry you know all those events you turn you were going to in london and stuff like that just to you know try and obviously get your foot in the door how yeah, did that I, I, work yeah at, at the same time i was doing a podcast i was just like cool that's good, but if no one can see me, what's the point of me doing this? So I'll be going to a bunch of, like, I'll be going on Instagram, finding a bunch of different um, music industry networking events and trying to hit people up, etc. cetera. Um, and then, like, one thing led to another, not even to bore you guys, but I ended up meeting very, some very influential people and then getting them on my podcast to talk to them. And I was using it subconsciously as a way of connecting with them. Yeah. So wait, if I... And yes, yeah, so if I didn't need any, if I wanted anything from them, I would shout them, but it wouldn't feel like I'm asking them a favor because I've built a relationship with them already. So you have this, right. this level playing field, if that makes any sense. And then started doing, using the networking events I was going to, jigging after school, I'll be running to networking events, coming back home, saying, oh, I've met this person, I've got this person's contact. And then I just build, build a contact, build a relationship with other people on the contacts. And then one thing led to another, and I'll get some work experience at a label, did some time there. What, every label? Half- label. 
Huh? At Vuna, Vuna. It was Vuna. It wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he got. He ended up through obviously that hard work and you know the networking. You end up, you know, getting a work experience at a big, big, you know, yeah, it was, company. Eye-opening. From there, I was like, cool. Vuna. I could stop That's now. But why not? Like I was using, I was using that as leverage. So like, cool. Every half term now, the relationships I built in that building. I would hit them up and go, all right, cool. Can I work under you for a week? Can I help you out for a week? Mm. I'll just go to the office for a week, exactly. help out with the stuff there, do work, then come home. Another half term, I'll do the same thing, offer value. Because I feel like in life, if you're just asking for favors, nothing's going to be handed to you on a plate. You have to offer someone some some sort of value for them to actually want to right. work with. Because you just feel like you're taking a lot from them and it's draining sometimes. Like working within within football or music, whatever industry you work in, when someone's asking for things 24-7, it feels like it's very taxing. And I feel like right. you as an individual, um, you have to offer some sort of value. If you're young, use your agents or leverage. Like, although people can patronise you, you have to realise youth has a lot of value and youth culture is what it sells. Like, youth culture is what's relevant and youth culture is what sells. So if you're able to understand that at a young age and use your mm. agents to leverage, Ages value and that's what you're offering to them is still something. Exactly. It doesn't have to be something that you can you can physically see, but mm-hmm. if it's something like that, I'm pretty sure a very switched on individual will highlight that and say, you know what, I, I could use this person. I like that about you. And, and that's the thing, you know, that's what you know sets sets, you know, sets you apart. You know, you, for you to obviously the way you're speaking now, you know, I, we're still quite young, you know, we're still we're speaking. But we have that right mindset, you know, that can, you know, open doors for us. That when people have conversation with us, like they can understand that, cool, this guy has a vision. He's switched on. He knows where he wants to go and everything. So that's the beauty of it. Like, you know, so now you're paving a way for yourself, you know, having that identity away from football, you know, making something out of yourself. Like, how did you obviously end up translating, you know, ending up away from, completely from football and getting into that music industry, you know, after the work experience and that? Um, after work experience, it was like a thing of cool, jigging, going to school, working part-time. Everyone knew my struggle. It was crazy. I was doing so much at one period of time. One time at one period of time, I was still playing football, um, like semi-pro, part-time. Um, I was at school um, doing music, like going in for work experience, et cetera, et cetera, offering my value when I could. Um, what else was I doing? Working part time also I had a part time job that I was keeping up with, and then at one point I was doing a podcast. At one point I was doing all of that, so like it was very taxing. But you have to highlight the thing that makes the most sense for you at the time and run with that. But yeah, I was. Uh, it was just a fact of like cool me pursuing it to the point where like people are now see my value and it makes sense for me to be around them. It's like go yeah. for the job. Like yeah, cool. Like join us and that. And then it was just like from then on, it's just been all guns blazing. But again, I would say like it is very much so um the start like you can't really get you can't get laid back you can't get complacent in this situation because again yeah. um 100%. In every industry i feel like runs at 100 miles per hour and if you do pause for a second like, you, yeah. will, you will you will like you just That's yeah, how, yes. there's no there's no room there's no room for complacency at all you have to keep you know keep the throttle on keep going feel like you know a lot of people can empathize with you you know after that scholar period of you know a lot of guys who may, might not have got scholars you know they were still jugging and trying to like find make something out of themselves you know even to echo what you said there I would, if you're if you're a scholar or if you haven't got a scholar and you're 16 i would say cool tap into yourself understand who you are as an individual find what you're interested in as an individual your characteristics mm. your personality highlight what those things are and look into yeah look into those spaces whether it's music football sports it could be um education it could be engineering whatever you're really interested in look into those spaces and look at the roles within those spaces that you can do because i feel like within football there's so many roles in which you can do but young black boys or young boys across the country aren't really aware of they're not talking about it yeah yeah that's why we have to you have to raise awareness about it, you know. You can be a football agent and make a silly amount of money. Like, look at the um, 
elite project agency, like they've got a crazy roster. Yeah. But although they've got Sancho, Saka, Iwobi on their roster, there's people Adam Olookman to say the least. There are people behind that that are pulling the strings and getting them the brand deals and getting yeah. them best deals like the best clubs and the best contracts and making sure that their situation is sorted out but there's people and very influential and powerful people that are doing that same thing with um um football you can work for the pfa and like actually have a respectful income and also yeah. like f- help footballers on a, on their day-to-day like there's there's things in which you can do within football that i feel like is not in our faces you can work for a, um, a reputable brand like nike or adidas and do talent scouting so yeah. the kids at the academies at a young age, say 15, 16, who are the next kids that are coming up and branding-wise align with the company? You, you're the ones that are giving them the boot deals. Word. So you're that's right. agent, Yeah, you're going to the agent saying, yo, this person you've got on your roster, like, cool, I feel like they align with our brand. Let's give him a boot deal. What can we do? Word. That's all in the space that you are in at the moment, but you're just not aware these things exist. And I feel like our boys need to be educated, number one, that these things are are here and they can happen and they're tangible they can physically go and go and get those roles because if anything there's no one better than those people in in the field that can do yeah. those roles the best like there's no one better than us because we understand it most so i feel like then yeah, in that space it's the same thing same thing if you love music you're, you're, you're for me i was a football, football i was a person in the changing room like in control of the, the speakers, like anyone, everyone knew like, right, man, he's connected to the Bluetooth. Like I'm the one that's playing it. So like if you're, if you're that guy in changing room and you love music, bro, you've become, you've become, you become an a and you become a talent scout, you become a, a head of marketing, you can work with your marketing and learn how to market your favorite artists to the right demographic of people and, yeah. and become um, a brand um, associate or brand manager and try and get the best artists um, to do some, projects with your, with your brand and make sure that your brand is looking as trendy as possible you, you can you can work for um agency so things, yeah. there's just so many there's so many That's things right. to... but Mally, yeah. listen like you've been on a roll I, I wanted to let you land in it but yeah, literally, yeah, yeah. like it's beautiful bro like, that's why i'm so happy obviously to get you on here to show that you know there's life beyond football to show that you there's more to life you can give more to the world than football you know, you can make something out of yourself. And that's why we need to obviously raise awareness and just give other people who were in that same position who felt lost at that point where they felt football was their identity. Just show them and give them hope that, listen, you can be and be doing great, amazing things in other industries and in other areas of life and just making like making something out of yourself, as we said, yeah. So it's just beautiful. It's beautiful to hear that, you know, all your emphasis and all these roles that people can get into, man. No, it's good. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Like, obviously, yeah. I just feel like yeah, young boys need to be aware of these things. And I feel like going forward in the future, definitely next year, one of my targets is to make sure that I'm doing a lot more work for the community in regards yeah. to like actually showing some sort of awareness. Like, yo, going to a bunch of schools, going to see like people that are like me and come from the same background as me and, and tell them, bro, like, you can do this, you can do mm-hmm. that. It doesn't have to be this. Because a lot, a lot of boys I've seen, like, once the football thing's gone, like, and it's not there anymore, they turn yeah. to the road. And they That's turn the to thing, it. like, I want to ask that question, like, let's discuss that question, like, why do people, like, why do boys, young boys that were in that similar position as you, why do they fail to make something out of themselves, you know, the years that go by after that, once they've been released or once, you know, football doesn't work out? Like, why do you think that is... Why do you think they could they they just park it off and then try and not make anything of themselves? Yeah, and they like turn to you know to roads, like said. crime road. Some of, I know boys that we've grew up with, you know, playing against that end up in in jail, you know, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Joy is that we so real, like even coming from our specific background and our area, wherever 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 you'd like to call it, I would say a lot of boys like that are extremely talented at the time, like. They didn't have their parents taking them to training. Mm. They didn't have this, their parents taking them to games, but watching them and watching what they were doing at games, etc. So it's a thing of cool. Word. You're doing this by yourself. Once it's taken away from you, there's no one. There's, you don't have the infrastructure. You don't have the family set up. You don't have the family unit that's mm. pushing you to do positive things. So you're going home to a place where it's like there's no there's no figures in your within your immediate group or immediate family that you can aspire to and say you know what I want to be like you 
then you're looking at your surroundings, your environment, you're leaving your house, you're seeing someone shot across the road, you're seeing your brethren at school make a lot of money doing something that you shouldn't be doing. It's like, you know that's what? A, that's a whole no. complete different perspective that you just brought out, you know, that it's actually facts, you know, the, the need for, you know, positive role models outside of food. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. like, you know, that's yeah. actually so important, you know, that it's a big factor in influencing people's situations. Wow. 100%, bro. There's, there's a lot of, like, kids that football was the only point of discipline. Like, without football, they won't be disciplined individuals. But when mm-hmm. they go to training, and they go training, they're listening to their coach, they're listening to the assistant coaches, they're working as a team, and they they understand their position. Once they leave that environment now, and they no longer have access to that, and any mm-hmm. role model, the coach might have been their role model, or someone's dad mm-hmm. might have been mm-hmm. the father that was taken into training. Once, that, once that's not there anymore, you have no one in your ear telling you to do to do those things anymore. So you're just left to your own devices, and the likelihood is, it's, it's survival of the fittest that are out here, at, out there. At the time. And it's just so like, oh, where it goes, so goes. do you feel like it's just in in situations like that, like what can be done about that? It's just you know unfortunate situations where you know people's upbringings and that. I don't know what. I, I like, of course, like, like it's, it, obviously, like. I don't, in situations like that, it goes down to the individual level now. The individual seeing that, okay, cool. Oh, I might not have the positive role models and that, but I know I, this is where I want to be at. This is the level I want to be successful at. I know I can put myself in situations or do things to help myself, to make something out of myself. Do you get what I'm saying? 100%. I feel like, obviously, I don't want to spare everyone in political agendas, etc. but, like, there's not much things that a young person can go and do where they see positive things like back in the day there were youth clubs and youth clubs youth yeah clubs. you don't really hear about that nowadays they don't really exist anymore within the inner cities anymore as they used to they're not they're not as prominent um churches a lot i feel like a lot of people in regards to religion are like young people are in that anyway like are falling out of love with religion as a whole as a concept and that i don't feel like it's a good thing at all but That's i feel cool. like I feel like um, there's a massive disconnect between. I can only speak for my for my own faith, my own religion, but I feel like there's a there's a disconnect between the a lot of leaders within the 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 church and the youth, and that's where there's another detachment between young people and yeah, yeah. The, the, the potential yeah. model in that anyway. So again, and also well, whilst we were growing up. The drill thing, like drill, people used to look up to people who done drill music, you know, six, seven, back in the day, like all those artists, those who, those are the role models that people used to look up to, like, it's, it's so crazy. What well, is, like, I hear that, I feel like, as a, as a young person, it, like, people are impressionable with it, like, it's kind of stupid, but <laughs> even growing up even growing up like now my mom's my mom saying yo this person's looking up to you and then I don't want to be a role model in it I just want to do my own thing but it, it happens to be that I'm doing something positive do you know what I mean yeah yeah but I, I, I don't feel like I should be held responsible I don't think any individual should be held responsible for their actions because other people are looking up to them I just feel like live your life the way you want to live it and then obviously if you, if you happen to be living a positive life then that's a good thing but yeah. I don't think parents should be raising their kids being like in in the notion that you know they should be looking up to this individual i feel like kids should be looking kids should be able to look up to their parents as role models in my opinion yeah so, and you know, should, i feel like yeah like you know people should be taught obviously an ideal an ideal self and like the best to, to obviously be the best version of themselves yeah, yeah. but but i feel I like it's, it's it's difficult to obviously say that make that point because you know Social influence has such a mad impact. Facts. Do you get what I'm saying? They're saying that your your friends, your five closest, the people you hang around the most, hang around with the most are the people you become exactly like. So, True. I feel like cool, you can say that, but the things you watch all the time are the people you're gonna start and you're gonna take on all those behaviors and that. So, you know, 100%. it's difficult to say that. Like, you just need to. I feel like yeah. At the end of the day, it comes down to the individual, man. Right. you know so <laughs> we've been rambling on but obviously to get back to the point that like, yeah so you now get a job at warner records you're an old yeah. 16 you know 
Warner yeah. Records. Um, Pardon? Parlophone music that goes through Warner Music. But yeah, yeah. Warner Music as a whole. Yeah, Warner Music. So obviously, how did you know the process of getting to the stage you are now? And yeah. what were you doing back then? Like, what did you have your work experience as? And what did you like get a job as? I was just doing anything I could possibly do in it. I remember the first, first time I was down there, shadowing a lawyer for a bit because my dad wanted me to be a lawyer. So I was shadowing an entertainment lawyer. I saw what the A&Rs were doing in A&R me and A&R for anyone doesn't know is artist and repertoire. And it basically um, consists of identifying talent. So identifying artists that you think have potential to go and signing them to the label, developing the talent and delivering the product. So developing the talent, putting them in different sessions with different producers, um, obviously developing the talent where you feel like it could go to and delivering the product, i.e. delivering singles or delivering a project and how mm-hmm. such. Um, that's my role at the moment. But yeah, I see I see what they were doing and how they were living in regards to the creative process of, of the music industry and music as a whole. And I just fell in love with it. Um, did a few bits of marketing as well because I was literally, I didn't really care what my entry point was. I just wanted to get in. Once I was in, I knew I could get to wherever I wanted to be. That's mm-hmm. my mindset. Um, nice. And then I did marketing stuff. It was cool. I remember I got offered a marketing job when I was like 17. Yeah, I got, I got offered a marketing job that I, when I was still at... Um, and I was still at school, I think I was 17, I got offered a marketing job and I was like, oh, that's sick. Obviously, I couldn't do it at the time because I was at school. And I got offered a job like five months afterwards, God's timing only, anyway, as a, mm-hmm. as a, as a out, um, obviously doing what I do now. And it's like, it's only God. Like, I was still at, it's very funny because I was still at school at the time. Um, but I just said, yeah, I'll make it work in it. I only had to be in office like twice a week. So I'll be going and do my mock exams at school and traveling back what, to You London. got offered a full time job, yeah? I was at the time I wasn't full time. I was an intern, but that's how they, that's how they made it. That's how they made it look. But I was still doing full time education, so I was in school doing it. And obviously, like I only see that for a month. How old were you around then? No, like seventeen. Seventeen, yeah. When lockdown happened, um, I was able to like just get my teeth stuck into it, etc. Start start getting to work in it. But there's no manual. There was no like you have to do this, you have to do that. It's just learn from people around you, um, as well as like me keeping good people around me at the time, and then. It was just leave from there. That was where like, I started elevating. But yeah, man, it's only up from now, really, truly. That's that's excellent, man. Like, you know, the, the way you're able to, you know, translate your skills into the music industry, get your foot in the door and, you know, start like, setting up yourself, setting yourself up for your future, you know. But yeah, like, how did you, how did you get to work with, you know, those big artists I can't lie, I'm not trying to, I'm not even trying to mention their names in it, but because obviously I'm trying to keep an elusive. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm like, humble, yeah. Shout about their man Tita. But um it was just the fact of me identifying certain people that I felt like had um ability and had talent to go further. And for me identifying that it's just me that like, I have no pride in it, so it's just about me shouting, shouting them seeing what the situation was at the time and just offering my value again. I feel like in life, as long as you can offer, offer value to an individual, no one will say no. So it's just about taking your shot, offering value to those individuals. How can you how can you benefit them as an individual and their development? And then that's mm-hmm. what I was doing truly in it. And no matter how long you are, again, your youth is your leverage, your youth is your value. So the fact that I knew sonically where those mm-hmm. artists were and where they could be, I was like, cool, this is how I'm going to offer value, et cetera. So yeah, just... It's just a matter of identifying talent and allowing it to flourish really and truly. So mm-hmm. Just wanting to be a part of people's journeys. Really. That's that's the whole the whole job is literally just identifying talent that you're passionate about mm. and want to add value and want to be part of other people's journeys. Mm. Rather than it being centered about yourself, you're now more selfless in your acts and how you're moving yeah. around. So. so it's kind of it's kind of like a football agent to an extent. Uh, I say football agency is more so management. So like if you work in uh, music management and you're managing an artist, I'll say that's more so for agency because you dictate what the artist is doing, yeah, similar to what football is as an agent, you're dictating where the person is going to. I would say what I do is more similar to head of recruitment or football recruitment. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. At clubs, you've got scouts. At clubs, there's a hierarchy of scouts. So there's, there's a scout that, that you'll see at your local match on the weekend. Then you, you go to... Um, Oh, this person's a, uh, a scout at um, Wolverhampton or for something, or like mm-hmm. 
executive head of recruitment at this club. So that's I feel like that's the that's that's probably the best comparison because you're working for a specific body in the mm-hmm. sense of record label, identifying talent, translating that to football. You're finding a player you like. You're identifying a player, identifying the talent, bringing them to the club. And the whole point of development would be having the coaches around them, getting them the right squads. Yeah, maybe yeah. like identifying if this person should be playing up or not. And that's how you develop yeah, and nurture right, it. Right. The ideal is for them to get to the first team and, or become an asset for the club. And in music, it's the same thing. Yeah, that's top. So obviously, you know, we're currently you're currently still an A and R. Yeah, man. Part of film records. Like, what have been your accolades since obviously getting into the music industry? You know, leaving football alone like how's it been what have you achieved so far I've, I've achieved a lot obviously i don't like to talk too much about like statistically and all that kind of stuff but i just feel like just give I us a little hint a little hint and uh obviously uh, stay home and that you see no, I, no, I listen obviously because obviously like you want it to be aspirational etc but i just feel like um it's more so like my achievements are that i value the most is more so like emotive like developing relationships with a bunch of people that I probably would have never met in my life mm. having connected with people that are so powerful to the point where like you can't buy that connection or being in certain rooms that you can't buy do you know what I mean Ru- mm, yeah. I, I, I championed those achievements rather than a plaque for example and obviously those are cool don't get too that's part of the game but like I rather not like get excited about those okay. but do, do, you, do you have any plaques I might do man Maybe <laughs> say no more. So you got a couple plaques there, which is a major, big achievement. At, you know, such a such a young age, man. But I don't feel like I don't feel Mali's not doing himself justice, man. That like, if he really gets into you know the people he's with on a daily basis, you know the people he has on his on speed dial, you know, like it's really crazy. Like he's really doing well for himself, like, and you know that's why we had to obviously get into this because you know it's possible to obviously do really well in another industry outside of football you know we need to obviously also get into it how you know Mali has his own you know clothing brand and that another you beyond football so how did, how did that work how did pardon? that turn up how did that turn up you know Bro, we just, I, I remember we were just in lock, we were, everyone was in lockdown and like, I feel like people were overthinking in it and lockdown allowed people to have a lot of time and you have a lot of time for yourself in it and like, obviously I'm a very creative individual and I love fashion that's probably one of my other passions as well in it so it's like you know what lockdown's happening how can I tap into that and work within that industry without having to clash with what I'm doing now like, let me just start a clover now and like I have the idea let me just draw up some ideas again. Your, okay. your top is what I wore for my for my first podcast. That's you crazy. Know. You know how mad that is. So That's crazy. Mad. Yeah. So his top right. was um. So you know his clothing band's called Fresno. So if you guys, you know, if you watched the first episode of the Beyond Football podcast, I was wearing that that top. You know, supporting my brother's business, and that uh, I'm telling you, it was top quality. Uh, I usually wear it. I wear I wear it a lot. To be fair, that uh, quality is amazing man and the design is great Thank you. we try and obviously i'm still in the works of um setting out a new line i feel like again in life you go through certain things and you realize cool this is where i went right this is where i went wrong and i feel like you need to go through those things in order for you to offer the best service or product so again mm-hmm. i am coming back but i'm rushed to prematurely bring something out that doesn't make any sense um yeah, yeah so yeah it's just about it's about putting out a product that i feel like People appreciate and also something I feel like I can I can have pride in giving out kind of thing. So yeah, hundred percent coming yeah. back. I'm just trying to make sure it's quality and with also infrastructure wise, like create something that is feasible. Like I can actually have some sort of consistent output of that product. So mm-hmm. that's the angle which I'm trying to go with. But I don't want to spare. I want to spare it with that with that job. It's just like that's literally just another avenue of you know of identity beyond the the game of football, you get, you know, uh, you see nowadays a lot of footballers have their own clothing brands, you know, Sterling just launched his own one, it's stuff like it. that. That's, that's all part of yeah, having that also, identity. Yeah, man. There's a Wolves player as well that has um, a brand called Carsick, I think that's hard. Um, yeah, yeah. See, like, Courtney Horse showing off his, like, his, um, his wardrobe the other day, and it's like, yeah, bro, yeah. like, this is refreshing to see because I've never seen this before, like. Yeah, so people are, people, like, People are becoming more aware of you know the importance and you know 
and it's beautiful to see. Thanks. Right, it's actually beautiful to see. I'll be so real. No, it's, it's it's so great. Like, you know, me and Mali can go on and on, man. You know, we usually speak, we usually speak a lot, you know. Whenever we're all day, FaceTime, boy. <laughs> whenever we're on FaceTime or anything, we have we always have deep conversations about, you know, football life. And you know, but that's why I'm so happy to obviously get you on here, man. But just to just to finish, you know, yeah. like, would you think like you know people who are like who are in that situation with you like I know you've touched on it a bit like what they can they do obviously to obviously have that make something out of themselves and you know mm-hmm. not wallow in the you know the like the sadness of obviously not making it making the dream come true of becoming a professional footballer and stuff like that like what advice would you give them? I would say like your best advice. And the best educational tool of knowledge is in your hands, it's your phone, isn't it? And you can go on YouTube and listen, read, like watch a bunch of different um, like things on there that have so much education on there, depending on what field you want to work in or what, what, what things you're interested in, just like I put earlier. And you can go in a massive hole and just see a bunch of different things that are it's inspirational and and align with what you believe in or what your interests are. So if you want to work in fashion, mm-hmm. you can watch a Joe Ablo interview about how he grows and his come up. If you want to work in music, you can watch an executive. Um, you can watch. Um, you can watch an interview about like the greats that are talking about their ins and outs of in the music industry. If you want to work in football, you can watch an interview about like how certain agents are. So in somewhat taking the piss yeah, yeah. out of the industry, but it's that's it. Like, there's a lot of avenues, yeah. I mean, you can into, get into yeah, man. yeah, just, but yeah, just around what I said, your biggest tool is your phone. And if you're able to use that to your benefit, go on YouTube, delve more into the things you're interested in, and see what you can do mm. elsewhere that don't consist of like being the main center of attention. You can find a bunch of different. And you know what else? I feel like, you know, more people our age, you know, need to get into reading, you know, like facts, facts, reading facts, facts. and developing our knowledge, you know. Like, I feel like, like I only started reading properly like this year. And, you know, so far I've read quite a few books and, you know, I really feel like, I really see the difference. You know, you learn a lot from 100%. just reading that. Like, I feel like what helped me, I started off with just, you know, trying to do 10, five to 10 pages a day and like just, just something small like that that can help as well. No, true. I feel like, yeah, again, it depends, on it? Like, everyone's a different type of learner. So, like, reading will, reading will benefit a lot of individuals, whereas... Um, reading will benefit a lot of individuals, whereas, um, like, listening to a podcast will benefit others. It just depends on what type of learner you are and how you yeah. consume information. So, yeah, it's one of the two. 100%, man. No, it's been great. I've been... Nah, I know people can 100% empathize and learn from obviously this conversation. Like, thanks Definitely. for jumping on, Mali. Daniel, listen, I always have time for you. Man. We'll probably, we'll probably end up FaceTiming each other tonight. We're talking about some deep stuff for five hours. But... <laughs> Come on, man. This is what it is, man. You move. This has yeah. been the Beyond Football Podcast. Yeah. We out. We out.